uh, running from north to south as far as the eye could see, the clouds were divided into absolutely even rows, as if you had a plowed field in the sky. And if you turned at right angles and looked in the other direction, from horizon to horizon, you had another series of what looked like absolutely even cloud rows. I have a series of photographs of that cloud structure over Los Angeles of last week. Good. Now, if that's the formation of the thing. Now, this particular phase of the weather uh, intervention over North America started, they started adjusting this stuff in shortly before the death of Brezhnev. Now, the signatures of adjusting it in are as follows. What you will get when you're starting to deposit and pop out energy here and there all over, at certain nodal points where you get pretty good pop out, dump of energy, you will get low-level atmospheric booms. Not the big booms, but the low-level little micro booms. And you had those going in uh, Alabama. You had them going uh, down in Florida and off the coast of Florida. And at various spots throughout the country, you had these things going and reported in various articles in the paper. That's what it was. You were having dumps, sudden little cracks or dumps of energy into the atmosphere, which are making these popping sounds. The other thing that you can have them doing is you can have them being dumped into the ground, and so you can have a series of little microquakes, particularly when they're in areas where you normally don't get those things. Now, on the microquakes in the ground, you will pick them up with a seismograph. Uh, they won't look all that much different from the uh, small microquakes that you get in nature anyway. But the micro airquakes will be significant. Now, they apparently took about three months or so to adjust this whole network in and get it all set and working right to their satisfaction. And then I'm convinced personally, it's my personal opinion, and I'm convinced that they are responsible to a great degree for giving us our beautiful floods that we had in the early spring of 1983 that caused a lot of flood damage here and there everywhere. When you say they, you are speaking I'm of the Soviets. I'm talking about the Russians. This is a Russian weapon, and it's coming from Russia, and is being used on us over North America, in my opinion. This is not to be confused with the ELF transmitter. No, sir. This is not ELF. Now, understand, if you want to disguise the thing, you can put a little ELF in it, ordinary stuff that you can pick up, and you'll think you're looking at the Russian woodpecker, and you won't know about the other stuff. Now, it turns out that water vapor, or water in the air, which is not really vapor, it's in droplet form, uh, where they tell us it forms around a little particle of dust, you have a water drop, and if you're high enough in the atmosphere, of course, it freezes. You have a little, a little particle of ice around the dust drop. But these little particles of water or particles of ice in the atmosphere are very interactive with this scalar wave stuff. They act as little interferometers, and they do react to the scalar wave stuff. And so the water itself in the air, in the form of clouds, does move and form patterns when very strong uh, scalar wave engineering is being done, or energy of this nature is being created in that region when you have the interference pattern. Okay, the first thing we did, we had an actual sighting, uh, a friend of, of mine and I, over Huntsville. We saw this grid pattern actually being adjusted in, and it persisted in the sky for over half a day. Now, that's a peg point for number one, fit, that fit very well in a time frame with the, uh, after the spring floods and all, getting ready for adjustment in the winter weather. Okay, after they got it adjusted and gave us the floods, the way that you can swing a cloud mask is once I have it adjusted in over an area, if I now turn my transmitter slowly, and I can turn them in any pattern I figure out to do, it's as if I move slowly that whole grid pattern. I can, and with phasing, I can make parts of it move. And so I can do things like reaching up and capturing uh, the pressure areas and moving the jet stream itself down so that uh, the classic pattern emerges. What we had in all this bad weather, we had this big jet stream dip very far down, coming in over from California, coming in over Texas and all, and then roaring up along the uh, ridge back of the northeast. And so it roared through the south and on up uh, parallel to the eastern coast. And we had storm after storm after storm roar through with that pattern along the bent and deviated jet streams of the upper atmosphere. 
Uh, California, for example, if you established a few blocking patterns, you had storms which came and hammered at the coast and hammered and hammered and hammered, uh, coming the same way. So that gave California a good show. Now, another pattern that you will find forming, and let's see, I'll have to give you a, a, a visualization here to get a hold of what I'm talking about. I want you to imagine now a checkerboard. Uh, where we've laid everything off in little squares. Now, in the center of, that's the wave diffraction pattern sitting up in the sky over North America. In the center of each little square, we're creating ordinary energy. You can put a detector in there, you can detect it. And by the way, the underground net went bananas in the United States. They, uh, people were calling me from all over with the uh, ELF and other kinds of frequencies they were picking up. And, in fact, what they thought was the U.S. government was doing this. And I told them that was nonsense. The government had not built a bunch of transmitters all over the U.S. Explain whenever you say underground net, Tom. Uh, the people who are a little bit off the orthodox pattern, uh, track and who do measurements out in the field and measure the Soviet woodpecker signals and measure uh, what kind of signals out there and who's trying to do what to who. Mm hmm trying to make uh, some sense out of it and trying to put it together and find out what's going on. Private citizens. Uh, Private citizens. Connected yeah. And with... they, they picked up these uh, this energy, which is in the form of frequencies, in the middle of each one of these grid zones. They picked that up all over the country. And so they thought that somebody had built an enormous number of transmitters throughout the U.S., but that's not the case. But it gives you the same effect as if the Russians had been permitted to come into the United States as if they had built a transmitter in the center of each one of these little grid zones. In other words, I've been calling that a virtual transmitter. The reason is you have ordinary energy there, just like comes out of a, any ordinary transmitter. You can measure it, you can detect it, and it has real effects. And so we had that sitting all over the United States. Now, the next thing that to visualize in each little square, visualize now a little mountaintop sticking up, and that's your energy sitting in that square. So what you're looking at on the checkerboard now is all of these squares with all of these little mountaintops, uh, these little um, al almost uh, triangular-shaped things or cone-shaped things sitting all over it. So you're looking at a whole bunch of little cone-shaped things sitting all over North America, and that represents the energy in sitting in each grid. Okay, each, around each one of those cones, uh, depending on how they're transmitting, the clouds will react. There are two kinds of reactions that will occur, and you can look up in the sky for yourself, and if you're lucky, you'll see one of these patterns. I've seen about seven so far. I've been successful in photographing one. I finally got a, had a camera with me when, I, when another one appeared over Huntsville, and I got that one's picture. But the signature to look for, the first one, is... Around where the cone of energy is, the clouds will form about two-thirds of a circle, about five miles in diameter. A little thin line of clouds will form this very unusual almost circle, about two-thirds of a circle. And then radially straight away from where the center would be, there will be long, thin lines of clouds running 15 or 20 miles. And you're looking at something that looks like almost like the old rising sun symbol in, in, of Japan in World War II. Only a piece of it is missing. You're looking at maybe a half or two-thirds of a circle with these radials running directly away. These long, thin lines, very straight of clouds. Very unusual formation. Going out in all directions from this uh, little... Radially from the support would be the center of that little two-thirds of a circle. Okay, mm -hmm. now... When you see that, that is not a natural formation. Now, if you've looked at the sky very much, you realize that clouds do form striated clouds. That's a well-known uh, type of cloud. <clears throat> there are many types of striated clouds. We are not talking about those normal striated clouds at all. This is very abnormal. You can't mistake it once you ever see it. That's the first pattern. What I call the giant radial. It's just a circle almost circle, about five miles in diameter, very thin line of clouds making about two-thirds of a circle. Then radially away from that, straight lines, very straight and very long, 15 or 20 miles long, radiating